really, really anxious at the moment. I feel a bit nauseous. <laughs> sometimes I think, oh, he knows me really well. He knows what I like. But then sometimes I think, he's still a guy. <laughs> You must be Corinne. Hi. It's lovely to meet you. I'm Wendy. Nice to meet you. Heavily pregnant Corinne dreamed of a shapely lace dress that could be fitted to her bump. But what will she make of Chris's Grecian maternity style gown? Okay. All right. <laughs> okay. All right. Here we shall we try. Yes. <laughs> I'm panicking now. <laughs> you ready? Yeah. <laughs> it's not what I expected at all. You pleased? I think so. I don't know. I just want to get it on and see what it looks like yeah. on. <laughs> just hearing you then, I'm, I'm hoping it's OK. <laughs> just can't wait to see it. It's her day, and I just want everything to be um, perfect for her. Wasn't the reaction that I expected. <laughs> oh, it's lovely. It's really, it's really... I can breathe. It's just not what I expected at all. It's nothing like the fitted dress that Corinne fell in love with, but she seems determined to take it in her stride. Let's say something. I did feel a little bit too hot in the other one that I tried on, you know, because it was heavy. Mm. This is nice and light, and I don't feel like I'm on fire. <laughs> But even she can't overlook the fact that Chris hasn't got her any shoes. Shoes? Oh, yeah. Women don't wear the wedding dress again, let alone a maternity wedding dress ever again. I, I would like some nice shoes, and I hope that he has thought about that. We really kind of have to trust him that he, he's thought about everything and not just the dress, and she's going to just be barefoot. It's the day before the wedding. And as usual, Chris is doing things his own way. To get Corinne nearer to Scotland, he's decided to send her on a very late hen do up north. Only problem is, he's been rather sparing with the details. I mean, I still know what's going on, so we knew what to take. It's OK for, like, boys to plan a wedding. I don't think it registers with them that all this has to come with a girl just overnight. <laughs> we need to know details. It's yeah. crazy. Typical. It's just typical of them. Uh, I was saying, I bet Chris thinks it's, this is something really, really nice and exciting and romantic that it's just whisking us off somewhere. I'm just getting a bit lightheaded. I need to sit outside, I think. It's like two hours till we need to set off and we don't even know where we're going, what we're doing, who's coming. I'm gonna, we've got to phone them now. Chris doesn't want the girls to know the wedding's in Scotland, so he's sending them to a hotel just south of the border. But he's in danger of taking his secrecy too far. Right, let's get some information. Bonjour. Don't you think it's about time you gave us a little bit of information as to what's happening today? Samir, chill out. <laughs> chill out, are you for real? Yeah, chill out. I'm having a complete breakdown. Christina's had a panic attack. We don't know what to pack. We don't know where we're going. That's, that's, why, you've, that's why you've called me, so I can give you a bit of information. But I shouldn't have had to have called you, Chris. You should have called us. No, you should have no, had no, this no, no. sorted no, no, sooner. No, no, no. We're playing our hand close to our chest because the I earlier. Think you're playing your hand. <laughs> yes, we are. Yes, we are playing our hand close to our chest because the earlier I give you a postcode, Samia, the earlier you get on Google straight away and find out exactly where you're going. But if well, I of course I'll be on Google yes, finding out where I'm going. If I leave it till the last minute, then you're going to be so rushed off your feet now, packing <laughs> that you won't have a chance to actually find out where you're going. You'll just be able to put the postcode into the sat nav when you get in the car, and there you go. So I need a sat nav. Yeah, you need a sat nav. We can get you one if you need one. I am going to kill him. It wasn't me that was late in letting them know, it was late in them calling me to find out what was going on. I would have thought he would have sorted the transport out for us rather than um, leaving us to sort it out ourselves. Then I've just been like, oh, we'll get the girls to drive. Aware that the wedding's tomorrow, the girls pack their outfits and head off for the hen party. But three hours of travelling isn't proving to be that much fun. I'm so tired and fed up with travelling and Samaya's driving. Oh, we were at a hotel. Oh. Hello. 
Hello, good afternoon. Welcome to the Crown Hotel. Thank you. You had a safe journey? Uh, yeah, it was uh, interesting. Good. <laughs> The thoughtful Chris decides to get the girls an extra last-minute treat. There's going to be a maximum cap limit on this of £100 that we're going to put in towards it, but I think that should be more than enough, to be honest with you. It's to be delivered, yeah. And the girls have glammed themselves up especially for the occasion. I hope it's going to be a good night. <laughs> it does feel like a bit more I can do now. Mm -hmm. Unless we don't know about. something that we don't know about. <laughs> of course, yes. Hi, Chris. Samir, hello, my dear. Are you all right? I'm all right, love. How are you? Not bad, not bad at all. Basically, uh, we're going to give you a number for a Chinese takeaway in a second. He's getting us a takeaway. <laughs> we'll put 100 quid behind the till so that you guys can basically just get whatever you want. It's Chinese. Yeah. And it'll be delivered there, and you can just kind of sit around have a girl's night in there and, uh, and basically eat Chinese food. Lovely. <laughs> takeaway at yours? <laughs> we're getting a takeaway. But it's not even ordered. We've got to go on Just Eat, which we can't because we've got no signal or laptop. <laughs> I don't really understand why we've come so far for a takeaway. 